Hey everybody, it's Small Guy. This is about as clear a focus we saw Cher's face in close up today at at Burlesque. The fact is that I went to the movies for Thanksgiving. And we went to support the lovely Cher franchise of Burlesque. Now I have to tell you I have to tell you this was this was in this one of those high definition digital screening situations where it was clearer than life and uh, the ads were so clear it was really scary and um, then the move the picture started and it took place in this oh my god there's so many new movies that are like trying to be tea party there's this new Gwyneth Paltrow one about some country western star like they're trying to appeal to the Sarah Palin market and 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 you know how they do it? It's like hee haw. It's like hee haw meets Loretta Lynn. They do not understand working class people at all, still, and they never will. Um, the birds are all hopped up. Just ignore them. So then, um, you know, the the picture starts, and it's more like this kind of like, uh, you know, she's a girl from Iowa or whatever. Christina. Is. Aguilera, and um, she's such an airhead in it. And she's, like, trying to be, like, this, like, 16-year-old blonde virgin type. Oh, my God. And then she's like, she's like, I want my money. I don't care. I want to get paid my back wages and move to Los Angeles and become a star. You know, so she takes money out of the register, and it's like, in this, in this dive roadside diner that doesn't exist anymore, you know, <laughs> like from the Great Depression, you know, and it's like it's like who would have spent any money in there that day, and and how can why is she still working for a man who hasn't paid her for two months? And the questions go on and on, and then she like takes the money for back wages, and it's like sixty dollars out of the register. Like that's what he owes her for two weeks' work that he hasn't paid her is sixty dollars. See the birds agree. And then she goes to L.A. like in a montage. Oh, then we can hear then, then, then we hear her sing, you know, and we hear her sing. She's like, whoa, 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 like that kind of stuff. Like she opens up a, whoa, 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 like that kind of thing, you know, like she's Jennifer um, Holiday in Dreamgirls or something. Like, whoa, 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 like that kind of stuff. And um, <laughs> she does a lot of that kind of singing. And so she goes to L.A. and she she lands in this kind of establishment that only exists in bad movies, burlesque, which is this um, fabulous dream palace of cuddly sluts. Like, everyone there is like a degenerate, and they make it just seem as American as apple pie and just the sweetest thing. They're like Disney degenerates. And all the guys have eyeliner on. And it's like, oh, aren't they cute? Like, Alan Cumming is taking a $20, please. He's so wasted in this. Just really, he does like a, he does like a, like a 10 seconds of a Joel Gray impersonation, and that's it for the movie. But it's like to give the feel that this place is, is fabulously seedy. But in this really safe way, and it seems to have, I mean, you find out that the, that the that burlesque is, is suffering economically. How will it survive? And yet it's really crowded with millionaires every night. Like, they go to see the same burlesque show night after night after night, but supposedly it's struggling. And it seems like the staff is endless. Like, it looks like there's, like, 25 women in the show. Like, there's more women in this burlesque show than in a Broadway show now. And um, the bartenders, like one minute there's one of them, the next minute there's three of them, then it seems like there's six of them. There's just like this endless staff. They have like endless people. Like Stanley Tucci is there as a um, full-time, I mean, he was supposed to be like a producer or something, but he acts more like a, um, like a costume person, like a wardrobe lady. And, and he and Cher are like fussing over, like organizing things like, they had like we've got a lot of work to do. They've got like all this work to like organize boas, and he's and he's like huffing and puffing and like 
and moving um, G-strings and pasties around. Like, he's got all this work. Like, I have got sequins to sew. Oh, my God. And their relationship is so nauseating. They're like this, like, asexual couple. It's so sick because he's gay. And, like, all good gays and politically correct things lately, he's like a eunuch. He's like this, like, PC, cuddly, sexless old femme, which is the, which is the way we're all supposed to behave now, according to the Democrats. And Cher's, like, um, Cher's uh, getting up there, and she's like, she's like, oh, you know, like, she's like, you are the best man for me. She's like, like they're, they're like this couple of sexless people, and they're like the guardian angels. Wait, I'm sorry, I'm digressing. And then Christina Aguilera comes into the, to the club, and she's like, this place is like the most magical place I've ever been. And she dream, and she, and she really, she really um, shows her stuff and manages to get a job as a waitress for the bar. And she wants to become, how do I get from here to up there? The dialogue is so bad. Whatever happened to the great dancers in Los Angeles? And then Stanley Tucci says, they're all dancing with the stars. The lines are like that. They're like that. Okay. So then I have to, I have, I'm already talking about Cher already, and I haven't even gotten to the introduction. So, so, um, so Christina Aguilera, like, trying to be like a 16-year-old blonde virgin, is like, how can a girl get from being a waitress to getting on the stage? Like, her dream is to become a stripper in a burlesque club. Which is a which is a positive dream in the Democrat world. It's a sex work job, and um, and it's like you know go see whatever her name is, Madge or whatever Cher's name is, and um, they go where's she? And they go there she is on stage, and she turns around and she's like, welcome to Berlin. She's like that. I really don't do Cher at all. You know I do some celebrities, but I don't do Cher. But it's like it's so amazing. Because as in focus as this is right now, is as in focus Cher was in the movie. And it's really quite amazing because you go from the high definition screen where you can see, you can see like the, the Christina Aguilera's nostril hairs. I mean, you can see everything, every blemish and in her and her male model boyfriend in the movie. And then they get to share, and they've dragged out the Lucille Ball in Mame filter for her, and she's up there, and they and and like she's doing her thing, and it's like they've gotten that filter, that Liz Taylor white diamonds filter, and it's like I think that's share. Fabulous. I mean, it's horrible and fabulous at the same time. The fag stag was like, oh my god. And it just goes on forever, and there's all these unnecessary complications, and the whole thing is as predictable as the day is long from the get-go. I mean, every step of the way, it's like, will I be able to do it? Yes! Will they get together? Yes! Everything is just unbelievable. And the other really weird thing about it is it's like those modern, like modern movies now, for some reason, audiences will not accept the idea of people just breaking into song. So everything has to be set like in the world of theater or something for them to accept the fact that people are going to sing. I really hate that about modern movies. So many of them, it has to be like in a club or something. And this one is like that too, except for Cher. Like there's like a million interchangeable Christina Aguilera numbers with a blonde bob with her like, you know, just writhing around, doing typical one song after another. They all sound like and then suddenly, it looks like they're going to lose the farm. Like, how are we going to be able to save the farm? You know, because it's like they're going to close down the, uh, the, the, this beautiful, blessed burlesque that must stay open because everyone there is so cuddly and sweet. And um, so suddenly she's like, you know, get the lights, put a spotlight on me. And she does a song just for the sake of it. I mean, maybe she was rehearsing, but then she does her big old number. And the fag stag said that even though she's really old, that Cher is still a hundred times more talented than Christina Aguilera. So they really had to tone her down. Like her, her power ballads were still better than Christina Aguilera. So they kind of put her in like the Susan Hayward, um, you know, in Valley of the Dolls. You know. She's like in the Helen Lawson role. This is my club kid. You know, that kind of thing. 
whatever. I mean, the poor woman, she can barely move her face. And she acts now with her eyes, which is really, really kind of funny. It's sick, but it's kind of funny. The thing about Cher is that even with the Vaseline on the lens, And the fact that she can't move her face anymore, and the fact that she's, like, so fragile, she had to be held up by cast members in half her scenes, because she's, like, five million years old, she still, even by just moving her eyes, has star quality. And she was still the biggest star in the movie, even with all those handicaps, even though you could barely see her half the time. Even with the ridiculous script she was handed... You got to give it to Cher. You really do. And Rex Reed, who said she's barely in it, that's not true. She was in it tons. She's always worried about the the club, and she's always, like, camping it up with Stanley Tucci. Okay, here's – I'm going to wrap this up with Stanley Tucci. I don't want gay marriage. They want us all to be little sexless eunuchs married to Stanley Tucci. like in that new uh, modern family thing. That's what they want us to be. And this was all about Stanley Tucci finding a boyfriend at the end and becoming normal, quote-unquote. I don't want it. Thanks, I didn't like that either. Go see it if you really want to torture yourself. I would rent it and just just watch the share parts for all the wrong reasons. Small GK. That was my first film review. Burlesque. Oh, God. Burlesque. Oh, one last thing. The guy spends the whole movie writing his dream song, and it's that, get it up, get it up. That's the song that he spends the whole movie writing. Okay, I hope hope that's not a spoiler. Oh, my God. You knew that was coming in the end anyway. Small GK signing out.